The first HDFI filter we're going to talk about is gzip. This is just a compression algorithm. And so what this does is it takes your data set and it compresses it. Nothing much more complicated than that. So conceptually, what's going on here? Conceptually, right, you have your your let's say your 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 numpy array or your you know your data set in memory, whatever it may whatever form it may be in. And you are going to your goal is to write it down to disk in your H5 file. H5, and this goes to disk. Now, if you had, say, 10 megabytes of a data set in memory that you wanted to write, you could just write it straight. Even in chunked format, it would take up 10 megabytes. Or you could say, well, before you do that, before you just write those 10 megabytes clearly, why don't we first take a look and see if we attach this filter in between, we'll attach the gzip filter. And gzip is just an arbitrary compression algorithm. And what it's going to do is before you write, you're going to hand off your 10 megabytes of data to a gzip filter. gzip is going to compress that data and it's going to write something less than 10 megabytes to disk. It's probably going to write something like maybe 7 megabytes or so. That's you know not a bad number. If you're lucky, depending on the structure, you might get more. Maybe you'll get you know, only 5 or 4 megabytes written. But it will be less. And that's important because when you go then to read the data again, you'll be doing the same thing. You'll be reading it from disk if you want to fetch it then expanding it backwards, running it, running it through the gzip filter the other way, right, so that it now decompresses that data, and out comes your 10 megabytes back into memory, exactly as you stored it, but you did not read 10 megabytes from memory, or from disk. You perhaps only read, let's say, 7 megabytes from disk, and then you spent a little bit of CPU time passing it through gzip and then making it available to memory. And all of this happens completely transparently. You don't have to worry about it. Since you have defined your data set with this filter attached, it is handled for you by the HDF5 library and file specification format. It does all of this in a way that you don't have to even think about. You just define it and attach this filter upon data set creation and you're good to go. Every single time you read or write from the data set from that time, from that from creation onwards, now will always pass through this gzip filter. It makes life really nice because if your data can be compressed quite a bit, and most types of numerical data can, then you have a tremendous, you have a decent amount of, of both disk savings, plus, much more importantly, you have increased ability to read and write quickly, which is everything when you're trying to work with large data sets. Right? Again, if we're talking about 10 megabytes and 7 megabytes, nobody cares. It's not that big of a deal. But if that number is not 10 megabytes, but it's 10 terabytes instead, and now you're going from 10 terabytes to 7 terabytes, that's the difference between, you know, that, that's saving that's saving, you know, 6 hours probably in that process, you know, in conventional and conventional systems right now. So, there is there is, you know, reasoned for for this to be considered and everything that you can do to speed things up is worth it. Gzip is one of the is one of the simplest filters you can apply and it's it comes stock with HDF5. It's part of the built-in filters that are available.